Hello, and good morning. I'm Francis O'Hare, your companion, as we reach back into the annals of local history. This weekend, Chronicle of a Border Town, I'll be interrogating the historical episode surrounding the founding of the coterminous town slash village of Harris in New York. Popular legend or beleaguered myth, one accounting has it that in 1695, an Indian chief named Pathungo sold John Harrison as much land as he could, cover in a day on horseback. Not wanting to get his horse's feet wet, he marked the boundaries for a future landlocked Harrison, which is still to this day the only community this side of the Long Island Sound without access to the water. Yet another legend has it that the uneven boundaries of the town were paced out by a drunken Indian while selling it to a colonist for a handful of beads, bright cloth, and white man's wampum. But the few genuine historical sources we have from the pre-revolutionary era attest to at least the following. Harrison was established in 1696 by a patent granted by the British Crown to John Harrison and three others, who had a year earlier bargained with local Native Americans to purchase the same area of land below Rye Lake and above Westchester Path, the old horse trail that led from Manhattan Island to Chester's Port. Local custom holds that Harrison was given 24 hours to ride his horse around the area he could claim, and the horse couldn't swim, or didn't want to get its feet wet for that matter. But this is folklore. In fact, the land below Westchester Path and along Long Island Sound had already been purchased and partly developed by the settlers of Rye, New York. The area that became Harrison had also been sold in 1662, and again in 1666, to Peter Disbrow, John Budd, and other investors of early residents of Rye. Disbrow and Budd evidently lost their paperwork, and the land was ultimately granted to Harrison and his co-investors in 1696. So upset were the people of Rye that they seceded to the colony of Connecticut until 1700, when the King of England ordered Rye to rejoin the colony of New York. But that story we must save for next week on Documentary Now, when we broach the fascinating local history behind the early Connecticut-New York rivalry.